What's up, Bucky Buckos? Old Man Top coming at you today with Tori to do our team builder video for uh, the St. Louis Rampardos and A Drive, aka Dan, for week five of season five of the GBA. Now, we looked over Dan's team, and Dan's team has a really, really good team matchup against ours. Um, quite a few of his threats just run through my team. Uh, Heracross, which he picked up in free agency, being one of them. So we're definitely going to have to look out for that, um, especially Scarf sets and the um, Agility set. Because after he sets up an Agility, it's wham, straight through my team. So we're going to have to watch for that. Uh, we have a few things set up to take care of that. Um, he has Sylveon on his team. Do not expect Sylveon this week. He has a bad type matchup against my team. Uh, mainly because he has to know I'm bringing Exadrill, and we destroy Sylveon's face no matter what. So, I really don't think he's going to have Sylveon on his team. Um, Sylveon gets handled quite a few ways by my team, and I know Sylveon is one of the best fairies in the format, but I don't think it's going to be brought. But um, we will discuss that as the team builder progresses. He has Victini. Victini is always a threat, no matter what. Whether it's physical, special, subset, no matter what, always a threat. So we have to be careful for that. And we uh, have to play to see what he's going to be running there. So let's dive into our team now that we've named a few of the... Oh, Jolteon. We can't forget about Jolteon. That thing is just a monster. It outspeeds my entire team and just woof. So we have to be careful with that. We're going to start off with Uzair the Thunderous. We've got Substitute, Nasty Plot, Thunderbolt, and Grass Knot. Now... One thing we're going to say right away, this will do nothing to a Jolteon that will be brought. So we want to get Jolteon out of the way as quick as we can so we can let Uzair the Thunderous come in and just destroy some stuff. Now let's talk about the set. Substitute. Why do we have Substitute? Well, namely because if he's going to be in 1v1 against Victini, we want to be able to set up a Substitute take minimum damage because substitute pranks will always go first. This is namely to uh, take care of the scarf set uh, and or the band. But uh, we get a prankster substitute up. He hits it, loses attack, defense, speed. Always. So uh, after one of those, guaranteed out speed and just nail it with something. So that's bueno for that. Um, another thing this is for is to help deal with Scarf Heracross and Agility Heracross. Because if we switch in, or we have to bring it in after it gets the Moxie boost because it had killed something, or we get a uh, predicted switch out or a hard switch and we end up with Thunderous versus Heracross, we want Sub to uh, try and dodge some Stone Edges. Because um, I don't think Thunder Wave is going to be really good for us this week. Because my team has so much trouble dealing with Jolteon. So, yeah. I don't want that to become an issue. So, we are running the uh, Substitute Nasty Plot Thunderbolt and Grass Knot. Now, why do we got Grass Knot as opposed to something like Sludge Wave or Focus Blast? Uh, mainly because of Quagsire. Because Quagsire can um, stand up against the offensive threats of my team relatively well and his go lurk um go lurk has a really good matchup against a lot of the mons on my team it has a really bad matchup against some of them too but i could see him bringing it this week now that's it for uzair uh prankster leftovers obviously with enough speed and special attack to outrun the things it needs to outrun so what do you think about uzair what does prankster do Prankster allows non-attacking moves to go first. So even if I'm slower than something, if I go for a substitute, it will always go first. Okay. That's what Prankster does. Mm -hmm. So that is Uzair. I'm bringing Raitos back this week, and we are not running Mold Breaker. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, tough. He has... Uxie, why would you not bring Mold Breaker? Because that is the single and only thing that I would need Mold Breaker to hit. It's his only Levitate Pokemon. So I do not believe that is worth it. And the Sand Rush, provided we get the boost that we need, 
outspeeds his entire team. His entire team. I'm, I think maybe outside of Scarf Jolteon, but I don't think he's going to bring that this week just because of my ability to switch around and deal with Jolteon that way if he was locked. So um, I don't think he's going to be running Specs or Scarf on Jolteon, namely because of that reason. So we got Sand Rush because we need to outspeed the things. So that's the Bueno, the Rye Toast, Life Orb. Um, we have somewhat of a unique um, Ev Spread. I don't remember. It It outspeeds Scarf something in the sand. So that was all the speed we dropped into it. And we put some HP in because it helps us take HP fighting from Jolteon a little bit better. Um, I think it makes it a two-hit KO. Uh, a lot more of a solid two-hit KO, especially with Life Orb. Um, it might even help us dodge that two-hit KO. So that is Exadrill. Standard set, Earthquake, Rock Slide, Iron Head, Rapid Spin, because we need all those moves for things on his team. Um, Rock Slide because of Salamence. Iron Head, if he brings Sylveon, which I don't think he will, but he might. Uh, plus, we can uh, Iron Head to avoid a Rock Slide mish miss on predicted switches. Um, Earthquake because obvious super awesome damage. So what do you think about Raitos? Fairly standard set. Luxor's ability, Luxor's item called Butter. There is not an item called Butter. It would be cool if he has Raitos and Butter. Yep. Butter. So we can call it Dry Rye. So you wouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, bring him back Spinal Tap this week. Spinal Tap our Mega Tyranitar with the Sandstream ability, Tyranitarite, obviously. Um, standard Dragon Dance set, because after a Dragon Dance, aside from his super fast Pokemon, we wreck shop between Stone Edge, Crunch, and Low Kick. Low Kick is always a two-hit KO on Mega Aggron, um, especially after we get a Dragon Dance up. Uh, Crunch, namely to destroy everything that Stone Edge does not, because between those three moves, we're getting neutral damage on everything, and almost super effective damage on everything as well. So, uh, that's Bueno. I mean, his walls uh, definitely don't take super effective damage. Uh, namely, Sylveon and Blastoise. But, uh, the Crunch. The only thing this has a little bit of trouble dealing with is the Quagsire. Which, again, we have Uzair for. And Uzair handles Quagsire relatively well. So, that is our Spinal Tap this week. Um, so what do you think about that? Pretty Mega cool. T-Tar. He looks like a crazy guy, actually. He does. Dragon Alright, we're going to move on to Crimson Sea Dog, whose name may change come battle time. But we got Crimson Sea Dog this week, and this is our switch in answer to Sylveon in the event he brings it. This thing also, maybe not 1v1s completely, but this thing takes T bolts that are not specs or life orb from Jolteon and shrugs them off in Morning Suns, provided the sand is not up. So, this is an ultimate failsafe for Jolteon in the event we get to the point where we need something to take it out. Because like I said, we can switch in, take two T-Bolts, and hit it back really hard with a flamethrower. Um, we got Toxic on there because I believe Quagsire and or Blastoise are going to be the switches into this. Um, especially Quagsire if he brings it, because he will probably be expecting a physical variant, which will have Wild Charge, which, I mean, even though it's going to be doing relatively good damage, is not a two-hit KO on any defensive Blastoise. So that's something important to know. And that is why we went with Flash Fire this week, and the special set. So we got Flamethrower, because it does relatively well damage to everything on his team that we need it to. The Toxic is not going to finish up. Uh, Snarl, namely because we don't have Dark Pulse, which made me sad. But this also helps us with Jolteon a tad bit, because uh, lower special attack, I believe. That's what Snarl does, right? Yeah, lower special attack by one. So what do you think about Crimson Sea Dog? Change its name to hot dog. <laughs> mm, I don't think so. Okay, bring him back Requiem. Requiem gonna make another appearance. We got that Cold Reverie on her again. 
are jellicent because uh, knockoff hair cross is a thing. Now, true facts, even with knockoff being super effective damage, uh, with the Culberberry, Stone Edge is going to do more overall damage if they all hit. Um, I did the calcs, and interestingly enough, the set does... The, the Stone Edge always does more damage than a knockoff, provided I have Culberberry or no item. It's not a marginal difference, but it's definitely there. So, and this is our answer to Heracross, among other things. Um, we have Recover, Hidden Power Flying. Now, except for completely specially defensive max HP Heracross, this is a guaranteed two-hit KO after Leftovers. And I think it's like 99.9% .9 possible with max defense, or a uh, max special defense and max HP. That is why we have it. Because we need it. Because this every day, all day, beats a unboosted attacking Heracross. So, I mean, we even beat Choice uh, choice Banded. So, that's what we need. That's what we have. We have Recover. In Power Flying. Energy Ball. Because we need something else to deal with Quagsire in the event that it comes. And it's probably going to. Uh, the Energy Ball also does a lot of damage to Blastoise. It also does a lot of damage to his other ground type, Golurk. So, I mean, Shadow Ball also does uh, good damage to all those things, but Shadow Ball, just because it's better coverage, I didn't want Scald this week because Guts Heracross is a terrifying thing that I'm extremely worried about, especially since my team spreads around status so well I would expect him to bring it. Unless he was going with Scarf Moxie Cross, which he very well could. So, that is Requiem. We are uh, almost max HP um, and max special defense with a little bit of speed, so we can't speed creep us with some of the slower mons, because he has quite a few mons right around the same speed tier as us. Um, I want to say Sylveon is one of them. And if we could outspeed that and get the recovers up, that would be uh, super bueno. So, any thoughts on Requiem this week? Uh, what does Hidden Power Flying do? Hidden Power Flying is a special move with a base attack of 60. And what it does is, depending on the in individual value spread, which are found here, they're called IVs, uh, all 30 except for speed being 31. And what that does is it turns my hidden power into a flying type attack. Oh, I thought it was like you use hidden power then you fly away. Say no, no, no. There's no flying away from Pokemon battles. I mean like fly in the air like you do? Mm-hmm. I mean that. Oh, okay. No, no, that's not what that does. That's would be nice, <laughs> but unfortunately that's not it. It just does a, a 60 base power damage special attack that is a flying type. So let's go to the debut Pokemon of the week, and that is Energy. And um, for those of you who don't get the reference, probably were not born uh, the same era as I was. Energy was a band, uh, early hair bandish time frame, and uh, they sang a song, I don't remember what it's called, it was on the Transformers, the original movie soundtrack, not that CGI crap they make now. Um, and the opening line, I believe, is Iron Birds of Fortune, and anytime I have a bird on my team, I name it Energy in respect to that. So that is why we have Energy. The Archeops, making his debut. And this set, if I can just set up rocks with this, I'll be happy. But this thing does have a few secondary uses. Um, if he leads with uh, his spinner or his defogger, we're obviously going to switch out turn one because we don't want to be dealing with those shenanigans. Um, especially Blastoise, who is one of his, uh, who is his spinner, because it has access to priority moves like Aqua Jet. So we don't want to take a huge hit and then get taken down, um, with his spinner being intact and uh, lose the advantage for rocks there. Now this is somewhat standardish suicide lead. Um, 
Full attack, full speed, with one special attacking move, Stealth Rock, Stone Edge. <laughs> And uh, the move set, we've got Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, Endeavor, Earth Power. Um, Endeavor is fairly standard. It is on the Smogan page for Archeops, so I expect Dan to be fully well aware of that. Uh, because he did have Archeops also last season, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm sure he is aware of the possible sets. But if I could get one of his Pokemon down to 1 HP, whether I have Rocks set up or not, that is fantastic. Uh, that's why we got the focus sash. Come, focus sash. Come in, take a hit, and just lay the boomstick down afterwards. Um, in the event that this gets switched out, turn one, um, this is also something really good to come in and answer Victini because we can come in, provided he doesn't get rocks up, take a hit, and uh, answer back because even if he's scarfed. After the speed drop, we outspeed it 100% of the time if he V-creates. Now, however, if he Bolt Strikes and predicts us, we're uh, out of luck there if he's Scarfed. But if he's not, we've got the answer here. Now, we got Stone Edge and Earth Power. Now, why are we running Earth Power? Because 100% of the time, no matter what the set is, Earth Power does more damage to a standard Agron Earthquake. Wrap your head around that. Even Mega Aggron always does more damage with Earth Power. And it just helps a little bit to uh, get a little bit more damage on the physical walls because he's probably going to be loaded up on them because of the Sand Stream, Sand Rush combo that we run so frequently. So that's why we got energy here. Namely, come in, if possible, get up rocks. If not, take the hit we need him to take, respond back, and take something down to 1 HP. So that is bueno, and if it's something we can take down to 1 HP, we got a sandstorm running, <laughs> dead. So that's good. So anything you'd like to say about Archie Ops? Can we see it shiny? Yeah. Does it look very different? No, it's not much of a change, just a little bit of a shading. Oh um, yeah, it's just a little bright. Say, the head color switches with the tail color. Uh -huh. uh, you should keep it shiny, it looks cool. Yeah. Why is it female? Because female do uh, most of the no, most of the power. Mm. Like it's, it's no real change. I just that's just what I had it set at. Okay. But alright guys, this has been our team for Dan the Man, aka Drive in the St. Louis Rampardos week five. Hope you enjoyed this team builder and we will catch you on the flip side. See you Togepeat.